Friend came over yesterday and we put um, pimento. She made homemade pimento cheese bread. Put that over top of that bread right now. Yeah, it's still a little warm. But it was awful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, we went to my brother's one time, just within maybe last fall, mm-hmm. and he made toasted cheese sandwiches. Now, I always just used white American, mm-hmm. and it's like pepper jack. That's what I use now. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't like something real hot that I No, but that just has a little tint, that's it. Just a little, just like your... Uh, Jalapeno. Oh, the jalapeno cheddar bagels. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they're so good. Do you know, I grow jalapenos in the garden, mm-hmm. and we chop them up and freeze them, okay. and then we have it written right on the bag how many grams, because I do it by weight, how many grams I need for a batch of <laughs> the <laughs> bagels. Yes. Okay. This one or that one? That one. Okay. That one could be too Because we're screaming. <laughs> okay. Okay. So remember they... Oh, we're talking bagels over here. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're good. <laughs> And then we just get them out of the freezer and use them. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is. And you know, people would not miss it. Oh, no. We could do something like this. Nope. No, well. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Culp Church on this just beautiful, beautiful morning. 
Uh, the snow is flying and everything is so wonderful. Uh, I'd like to and, and welcome you all to our worship service today. If you're joining us online, my name is Pastor Adam Meller. If you're joining me in person, my name is Pastor Adam Meller. Uh, and welcome to Catawissa Parish. If you're joining online, I do ask that you uh, fill out the online attendance. And that's a great way for us to be able to keep track of that. I know I sometimes forget about it, but uh, please do that. It is so helpful to us in our uh, making sure we know who all's online and keeping track of everybody. Um, not that we're tracking you, but we'd like to know if you're online and worshiping with us so we can reach out. Announcements were up on the screens as well as they're in the bulletin. Again, it's just a reminder of the small groups that are going on. There's a lot of them. Uh, you'll notice some uh, changes have been made to it. Uh, one of them is that we are uh, reminding you that for the month of February, the food bank in Catawissa is collecting SpaghettiOs and Chef Boyardee. And so if you're at the grocery store, if you have a few extra, feel free to donate them. Also, you'll see in the bulletin, I had mentioned it last week, uh, Listen by Phone. It's a new offering that we have or ministry for Catawissa Parish. It's a great way for you to be able to uh, reach out and to offer uh, those who perhaps don't have internet access an opportunity to join in with the worship service. Uh, the number is printed there. It's 570-221-4004. Uh, and they can listen to the worship service, the new worship service, as in what we're, we're doing right now, will be available after 10.30 a.m. today. And it'll run all week. You can call whenever you want. It's on demand. Uh, and they can uh, listen in to that service even as many times as they want. Uh, I know all of you who are uh, listening and hearing this right now either have internet access or here in person. But if you know of someone who's a shut-in, don't even have to be a member of our churches, but that would benefit from being able to worship because maybe they just aren't able to get out, uh, please share that information with them. Also, you'll notice in your bulletin, Ash Wednesday is coming up. It is on February 17th. That's not that far away, about a week and a half. Uh, we'll have a service at RCV, and these are open to everyone, uh, a service at noon at RCV on February 17th, and then a service here at CULP on, at 7 p.m. on February 17th. Uh, it's going to look just slightly different this year as far as how we're going to do the service. Uh, because of COVID. Uh, more details on that will be following, but uh, just know that that service is coming up and uh, please make plans to attend. Both of those services, the noon service and the 7 p.m. service, will be streamed on the church's Facebook page. Also, uh, uh, according to our plans and we're praying weather cooperates with that, uh, the Disciple Bible Study on Matthew will begin tomorrow evening here at Culp and on Zoom. Uh, so if you signed up for that, great. We'd be loving to have you join in on that. Uh, so that is at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. You also notice in the bulletin there, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven other ones that are offered. Uh, and I don't think that's all of them that are offered. Uh, so please find some. Uh, there are plenty of small groups to join and just be part of. Even the last one there, Tough Questions, that one is already recorded and is up. And so you can access that anytime you would like to watch it. Also would like some feedback on that. If you have an opportunity to watch it, they're a half hour each. Uh, some feedback on that would be greatly appreciated so we can uh, proceed however way we need to. Also, youth group uh, will be next Sunday uh, here at Culp, and that's from 2 to 3.30. Uh, so uh, plan to attend for that. And also, uh, would you like to announce it this morning or would you like me to announce it this morning? Okay, uh, so this week we got a call from the district office, which is uh, my boss's office, and they informed us that uh, they're putting together a worship service uh, for the whole conference, which encompasses a little over 900 some odd churches in Pennsylvania. Uh, part of that is they're going to emphasize youth ministry in the month of March, and our youth group has been named for the Lewisburg district as a growing youth group, and so we will be representing the Lewisburg district and that part of the worship service. So our youth will be gathering to do that next Sunday and today a little bit uh, in parts. So that'll be taken care of. Uh, it is an extreme honor and I am just overjoyed. I know Lauren is overjoyed as well. And she told me they have 19 youth, 19 youth uh, from our youth that are signed up for that. Yes. So we are quite excited about that. Also, remember that the youth group will be going uh, to do bubble ball, which was created for a pandemic, was it not? Stick yourselves in a bubble and run into each other. Uh, so that will be on Saturday, February 27th from 4 to 6. 
at Christ Wesleyan Church in Milton. Uh, so leaving the parsonage at 3 o'clock, and please let Lauren know uh, by Ash Wednesday if you plan to attend that. Any other announcements this morning we need to lift up? Gail. So the Red Brick Church will not be baking donuts this year, and they do not know when they will do it next. <laughs> Any other announcements this morning? Yeah, Timmy. So when is the Jeremiah study? The Jeremiah study is Wednesday. Thank you for that. Is Wednesday evenings at seven o'clock at RCV. Okay, thank you. Any other announcements? Not seeing any. Uh, let us then prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning. Let us pray. Most loving and gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity of worship, that we are able to gather in your presence, and that we can find your spirit and your truth present here with us today. God, we pray that this service of worship would be honorable and pleasing to you and to your name, that you would be glorified above all. God, we pray that the distractions of this world would not continue to ensnare us, but that this time of worship we could fo focus wholly on You, Your truth, and Your light to this darkened world. We pray this all in the name of Jesus, who is our Savior and Lord and King. Amen. If you would stand for our opening song, Love Divine.
Please be seated. Our first scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 34 through 38. Let us read God's word together. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. We now have an opportunity to come before God, offering Him our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings this morning. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that on this snowy morning, we are able to come and to offer you not only our financial gifts through the offering plate or through online giving or through mailing them in, but that we can come to you and offer you our whole lives right here and right now as we are gathered to learn more about you. God, we pray that you would find our offerings of our financial gifts of our lives, of our talents and offerings, pleasing and honorable to you, that you would take and use us for the furthering of your kingdom here upon this earth. We pray this all in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, who is our Savior and Lord, all God's people said, amen. We now have an opportunity to share joys and concerns this morning. Are there joys to lift up today? Absolutely. Snow that's on the ground, uh, offering some opportunities for some playing around in it, hopefully this afternoon, and not spinning around in it in our cars, right? Both of those things. Absolutely. Other joys? It's Ann Miller's birthday, I hear. Happy birthday. (laughs) Other joys? Nice to be back in church. Absolutely. Welcome back. Your names again are... (laughs) Special music. music? Absolutely. Thank you to Timmy and Gail for offering that special music this morning. (laughs) The days are getting longer and we're getting closer to spring. others any yeah yeah Absolutely, the beauty of God's creation, the opportunity to do that as as a father and, and sons. Absolutely. Other joys? Any concerns that we need to lift up this morning? Prayers for Denise Starner, who's having surgery this week for breast cancer. Absolutely. Others. Yeah. I have a yeah. story. That my dad had a scare a week from today. But thank goodness. Um, and there's so many helpful people in the medical background that have been to him and took care of him. And, and now he's home and resting and doing much better. 
Yes, absolutely. Uh, prayers answered for Gary, who had a little bit of some trouble last Sunday right after worship, uh, but that he is home now from the hospital and is recovering. And we just praise God for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Other concerns? Lord. Uh, Prayers for the family of Warren Whitmire. Whitmoyer, sorry. Passed away recently. Wonderful. Uh, so the family that was seeking to adopt uh, from Columbia uh, have completed the adoption in our home back in the United States. Continue prayers for Dewey Hubler, who had surgery this week. Okay, so prayers for him and those continuing uh, procedures. Anne. Absolutely, prayers for Jean, uh, for healing for her. Other concerns? Prayers for all of them as well. <laughs> Any others? Not seeing any others, uh, let's come to God for a moment or two of prayer. <laughs> Gracious God, we thank you for today. That it's <laughs> it's winter, it's snowing, but that you are, are present with us here this morning that you are present with us in our homes, that you have guided us and directed us through this last week and have delivered us here to this day to honor you and to worship you. God, we thank you for the joys that we have named aloud, for the joys that have been uh, shared. We thank you, God, for the joys that perhaps we have forgotten about or the ways that we have seen you at work that were so perhaps ordinary to us that we have forgotten the significance of them. God, we praise you and thank you for health, for our homes, for our freedoms and securities. God, we thank you for the gifts that you have blessed us with even to this day as opportunities to use them for your honor and for your glory and not for our own selfish ambitions. God, we thank you for the opportunities this week that we have seen uh, to proclaim your name boldly, to share the good news with others, and to live as your followers. God, I thank you for the small groups that we have here at Catalyst Parish, for the opportunities that they present for us to continually grow deeper into your holy word and our relationship with you. God, I ask that you would continue to bless all of our small groups, all of our individual devotional times, that they would be times set apart of importance and priority, that we can glorify and honor you. God, we pray that you would continue to guide us and direct us as your people, that your spirit would make known to us a way forward that would be the best way forward to reach the most amount of people to declare that your kingdom is at hand and that there is hope in a troubled world. God, we know that there is hope, but yet there are so many things that still seem to bog us down. Concerns and worries, doubts and feel, failures and, and worries that come to us. God, we pray that you would comfort us in doubt and failure. That you would give us hope Remind us of your abiding presence with us day in and day out. Almighty God, you have heard those concerns that we have named aloud. But we ask that you would hear those concerns that are on our hearts and minds and souls as well. Sometimes too much even for words to express. 
But we know even then, God, you hear the very groanings of our soul. God, we pray for our nation. We pray for this world. We pray for unity to come about only in your name. God, we pray that you would be with the persecuted church around the world. That they would find the faith and the courage that they need to continue to share the good news of the gospel. And that you would remind us that we are called as your disciples always, no matter where we are, to do the same. We also come to you with repentant hearts this morning, acknowledging that we have fallen short of your glory, that we have sinned against you and your law. God, we ask that you would forgive us, that you would free us, that we would be your disciples free from the demands and laws of this world, but wholly resting in your arms and your way and your grace. We pray this all in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, the children can head down to Sunday school this morning. I think you're going to have another fun group this morning, Nancy. For those of us who are staying upstairs, I think it's about equal who went downstairs and who's staying up. That's perfectly fine with me. Uh, our text this morning is from 1 Corinthians 13, and we're going to read the whole chapter. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity of worship And now, O God, we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This morning starts a a two-week mini uh, worship series. And can you tell? There's a one-word thing that might see as an overwhelming wave throughout the worship service so far. I'm looking for a word. It starts with L. And it's the theme for our next two weeks. Love. Shockingly, right? I know some of you were just going to say Lord, weren't you? Because it starts with a noun. No, it is love. And we're going to look at some different uh, aspects of love. 
Something interesting about especially the New Testament, if we take it back to its original Greek text, there is multiple words that mean the same thing as love, which is just darn cool, I think. Uh, and so this, this morning, we're going to focus on one of the first meanings of love we're going to hit together, and that love is, remember from the previous slide? Agape. agape. Yes, agape love. Anyone ever heard the word agape before? Where have you heard it? A place in Bloomsburg that does what? Charity work, Charity work right? Uh, they offer lots of outreach and missions to it. So we're going to look at the word agape. But first, I think, if we're going to talk about love for the next two weeks, I know some of you just said, oh, this is going to go hallmarky real quick, isn't it? No, we're not going to go real hallmarky on this right away. Uh, the love that we're talking about is in the Bible is multiple uh, avenues of love. There's love that we find that is shared between uh, spouses, certainly. We find love in the New Testament that's talking about a brotherly love or sisterly love. We're going to talk about that next week. Are you ready for it? I can't wait on this one. The love in the Greek New Testament for brotherly or sisterly love is philos, where we get the word Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. <laughs> Cheesesteaks. Cheese yes, that's the other part of it. Yes, <laughs> yes. But this morning, as we look at agape, which is a different kind of love, we're getting into that a little bit, I want us to kind of think for a moment, in your day-to-day -day lives, or oh, if you watch TV and you see commercials, where does the word love come up in your day-to-day -day lives? Maybe it's in, in sharing I love you to a, a spouse, or, or even to a pet, or to a child. Maybe I love you is, is something that you hear on the, the radio, or if you watch Hallmark, it's about every other word that's included in it. But where is it in our day-to-day -day walk that we see the word love and how is it used? Certainly love is a word that perhaps we overuse in a lot of different contexts where it doesn't really have its place. Where we say, I love snow, right? Everyone knows that's not true, right? Especially after a couple snowstorms. Or I love this piece of toast that I'm eating this morning. Or I love this. We use love in such a way that I think we underestimate and forget some of the meanings that come behind it, especially in the biblical text. So if we go to the next slide, I want us to look at exactly uh, agape, and that is in the Greek text. You can see it written out there and then in English. And agape, as it's referred to in 1 Corinthians 13, as it's referred to in John 13 that we read this morning, it is a perfect, unconditional, sacrificial, and pure love. Agape love is the love that God shows to us. Unconditional, pure, sacrificial love. Agape love is this most wonderful... It fits now with the place in Bloomsburg now, doesn't it? Sacrificial. Agape love is something that we have trouble even understanding in its full context. Say when we celebrate communion. Give us about 10, 15 minutes. Agape love is so wonderful is because it comes from God first and is a gift to us. Agape love is what we read of in John 3.16 that says what? When God so, for God so loved the world, right? That He gave His only begotten Son. This kind of love that we read about in 1 Corinthians 13 is that same agape love. Looking at the text from 1 Corinthians, I just want us to see it. Uh, as it plays out, Paul is referring, Paul is the writer of 1 Corinthians, and he's referring every time he mentions love, which is a lot of times in 1 Corinthians 13, he is talking about agape love. Right, Grant? Yeah, that's right. Love is patient, it's kind, it's not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude, it doesn't insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And it goes on. God's love for us, it fits, doesn't it? It fits perfectly. That God's love for us endures and bears all things. It isn't rude or inconsiderate or ignorant. ignorant. It continues to abide with us. Always. Love, it says in verse 8, never ends. God's love towards us never ends. Now, 
I want us to pause right there. Because when we're talking about love, I think it's really easy for us to take this, ta- this text from 1 Corinthians and we can say, well, if love is from God and it, and it bears all things and it's sacrificial and unconditional, then it can bend and go through all things and continue to remain constant in our lives. That I can get away with murder, so to speak, with this love abiding from God. I want us to recall even the words from uh, the Old Testament. Israel was God's chosen people. And as God's chosen people, He continued to defend them and protect them against larger enemies and forces. And the Israelites on their part would turn to God in those moments where they were struggling and didn't know what to do next. But then when when the battle was over, they kind of drifted away from God. And they continued this, this ebb and flow or roller coaster ride throughout most of the New Testament. And God eventually said that I am no longer going to protect you. And we get the Babylonian invasion of Israel that destroys the temple and sends them into exile. But I want you to remember how God leaves it there, in, especially in Jeremiah, and we read of Daniel. God says, one day though you will return to Jerusalem and you will rebuild your temple. In other words, just because God loves us just as much as God loved the Israelites doesn't mean there aren't repercussions for our actions. This agape love from God is pure, it's unconditional, but it does not give us a blank check to go out and do whatever we want or turn our backs on God at any moment. It calls for us to continually walk humbly with God. Because God first loved us, we then in return need to go and love others the way God loved us. Now this can be challenging, can it? Who's tuning into the Super Bowl today? Woohoo! All those people. All right. That was, that was an overwhelming number of them. But when we tune into it and we get these two teams together and they, they start to, to go at it on the field and, and there's all of that that goes around it, at the end of the game they're going to shake hands and they're going to move on. So oftentimes I think we forget when we take sides on things to shake hands at the end and to move on in unity. Because of the agape love that God has first given to us, we are called as Christians to have unconditional love for our neighbors, our friends, for those who root against the opposite team as us. Agape love is something that we fully can't understand in this lifetime because it is agape love that sent Jesus to the cross to die for us for the forgiveness of of our sins. Lastly, I want us to look at the agape love in 1 Corinthians 13. Paul has spent most of the first letter to the Corinthians talking about spiritual gifts. If you back up and look in chapter 12, he's talking about spiritual gifts on how we're to use them to honor and to please God. And then immediately uh, in, in chapter 14, he picks it back up and says about spiritual gifts. 14.1 says, Pursue love and strive for the spiritual gifts. And in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, in the last chapter, verse 31, it says, But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. Referring to love that he's going to talk about in 1 Corinthians 13. Paul says explicitly in this chapter that love is more important than the gifts God has given us. Well, the first three verses of 1 Corinthians 13 point us to that. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have all faith so as to move mountains, but I don't have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain love. Nothing. Paul is making this extremely important point to the early church and to us today that we can have church perfect attendance. We can have a cross hanging around our neck and a lovely golden pattern every day of our lives. We can have all of the spiritual gifts and be able to name them and have them memorized. 
We can continue to give to the church all through our lives, but if we do not have that pure, sacrificial love of God, and if our actions don't come from that pure, sacrificial love of God, it all means nothing. Love of agape is not the love that we share between a husband and wife. It is not the brotherly or sisterly love. This love, agape love, is the love that was there for us at the beginning of the creation when God formed the earth together and breathed life in out of the chaos. Agape love is what is showered upon us each and every day even though we are not deserving of it, even though we fall short of God's glory. This love remains there for us. An agape love, pure, unconditional love, is love we, huh? We are then called to share. We get to share agape love. Pure, unconditional love. Don't share this out loud. But over this past week, Where are the ways and times and opportunities that you shared agape love? Don't share it out loud. But I want you to look over the week where you offered that pure sacrificial love that God has first given to you. Where have you shared that with someone else? Love is the central expression of Christian faith. Paul makes it clear here for us that if we have all the faith in order that we can move mountains, that we can glorify God in every way, but we don't have this love, it means nothing. Do, does the world know that we are Christians by our love? Does the people around us, do the people around us and our families see this agape love abiding in us, even in the midst of the pandemic when we all seem just a little bit more cantankerous? Does the world around us see the ways that we are abiding in God's steadfast love and sharing this love? Love over this next week is going to come again to a centerfold as next week is, uh, fellas, hint, hint, Valentine's Day is next Sunday. And it's going to be talked about in all of these different fashions for Valentine's in the schools or, or roses or whatever it might be. But I want this to be an opportunity and a reminder for us to look at the love that God first offered to us. The New Testament tells us that God didn't just offer this love for us to hold inside, but this is love that we have been offered and given freely so that we can in return go out and share it with the world around us. Agape love that is sacrificial. In your Bibles in 1 Corinthians 13, hear these words again starting in verse 4. Hear these words in in recognition of what we now know about the agape love that's being talked about. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on getting its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Verse 8 continues on there, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. In other words, Paul says, in other words, your gifts that you have, the talents that you've been given by God, eventually they will come to an end that we won't be able to do them any longer. But then he concludes it by Starting in verse 12, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now, faith, hope, and love abide these three. And the greatest of these is? Oh, you sound overjoyed with that. Love. (laughs) Love. (laughs) Paul is making it clear to the early church. And I think it's a calling for us today to hear these words anew. That yes, we have been blessed with gifts. 
Yes, we have been blessed with ways and opportunities to serve God throughout our days, working with our hands or sharing in hospitality or whatever it may be. But brothers and sisters, if it doesn't come from love that we have for God and that God has for us, it means nothing. A survey was taken of those horrible group called the Millennials. Ever heard of them? They're awful. I know, I'm one of them. And this millennial group, they surveyed them and what would be the most best possible way to get them to come into a church? What would be some of the attributes that they would be looking for to join a church? And one of the top responses always is genuineness. I think that goes for every generation, does it not? Genuineness, that we're, when we're involved and we're in a community together, that genuineness would be there. Genuineness means that we have fully seen and and encountered the love that God has for us. And because we have that love that we have encountered personally with God, that we would then want to return and share that love with others around us. That is the genuineness of our faith. Do you ever get told a really good joke? No one. No one's ever heard a really good joke. See me afterwards. Maybe we can find one. But when you hear a really good joke or you have a really good story of something that happens, what's the quickest reaction we have? What do you want to do with that joke? Share it. You want to tell it to other people, don't you? So it is with our faith. Once we encounter this great love that we have, that God has given to us, our natural reaction needs to be, hey, I got to tell you about this, of what I've encountered, what I've experienced. And how it has changed my life. The world around us right now is hungry for genuineness, for truth, for love that is pure and sacrificial, unconditional. The world is hungry for God's love. Let us go and share that love to the world around us that God would be glorified. Amen? Amen. Amen. This morning we're going to be celebrating communion at the Lord's table. Uh, If you didn't bring communion elements, uh, I believe Kale's grabbing, we have some extra ones uh, that are pre-sealed and pre-packaged if you need them, uh, so they're available. And while he's doing that, I just ask if you would please stand and join with me as we confess what we believe as recited in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Kale has extra communion elements if anyone needs them. And the kids can come up for communion then as well. I ask that you would gather your communion elements so they are are present with you. On the night in which Jesus gave Himself up for us, He took bread and gave thanks to God and broke the bread, gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat, this is My body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. When the supper was over, He took the cup Give thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith that Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
if you would hold out your communion elements. We good? Okay. Pour out your Holy Spirit on, on us gathered here and those of us online. And these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through Your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in Your holy church, all honor and glory is Yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Take whatever bread you brought along or cracker and break it. And remember that this is the body of Christ, broken for you. Whatever cup you have, I'm not sure in the upper room they had a Starbucks cup, but it'll work. Remember that this is the blood of Christ poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. And so take and eat and drink and be thankful. If you are joining us online, please eat and drink and be thankful as well. A reminder that in the Susquehanna Conference of the, of the United Methodist Church, we are open and able to give communion uh, not only in person but online for all those who are joining in and who come with a repentant heart. It does not matter uh, membership or attendance. All that matters is our relationship with Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that we can gather at your table this morning, that you are present here with us. God, we pray that you would forgive us of the ways that we have fallen short of your glory, for the ways that we have not shared your agape love to the world around us. God, review and, and renew within us that we would see that agape love that you show towards us, that we would be reminded of it, that we would see it in action, and that we would then be called, so called by you, to go and to share that same agape love to the world around us in your name. We pray this in the matchless name of Jesus, who gave of agape love so that we may have life everlasting. Amen. I'd ask if you would please stand for our closing hymn this morning, The Gift of Love. It's number 408 in the hymnal and it's up on the screens. Also, uh, take notice to the words of it, it is taken directly from the first three verses of 1 Corinthians 13. Let's stand and sing. Brothers and sisters, go out into the world with the love of God abiding in you. Go as a people who have been forgiven and reconciled to God Almighty. Go with the good news and the hope that our Savior is alive and well and offers peace, love, unconditional love 
to the world around us. Go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all God's people joyfully said, Amen. Amen.